Hey, Tony here. So today I'm going to do another recommendation video for the Criterion Collection, uh, but this time I'm going to have a guest on. It's going to be David from the Film Collector Archive. So we recorded this and gave 10 of our recommendations, five from me and five from David. So um, please watch and hopefully you'll get some great recommendations. So thanks, David, for joining me with our 10 recommendations for this current Criterion. Um, half off sale at Barnes and Noble. Um, do you have a lot of ideas of things that you want to pick up during the sale? You know, it's funny because um, you and I have known each other for a long time. I used to go really hard on these sales. Um, mm -hmm. That's just not the case anymore because I'm pretty, I'm pretty much up to date on what I want from the collection. And so now it's like items that are, that are scheduled to come out. Um, mm -hmm. In the case of this sale, there's three titles. Um, Princess Bride, Blood Simple, and Blowout that I'm looking to upgrade to 4K. Yeah. Um, three of my, uh, you know, favorites from the Criterion Collection. So I'm looking to upgrade those to 4K and past that. Um, Are you interested uh, in Risky Business? It's coming out at the beginning oh, of July. Thank you, Risky Business. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that film for years. Yeah, so I haven't I'm either. Gonna, I'm going to I'm gonna actually try and stream that one. I appreciate the reminder because yeah i'm going to try and stream that one and yeah. and just see if that's one i want on the shelf but yeah that there's potential there because you and i are both big 80s fans yeah and another one i was thinking about was pat garrett and billy the kid yes that's another one i need to another july release so those are the two i'm looking for that are being released in july yeah yeah that's that's another one that i'll want to screen mm -hmm. um a lot of those and that's that's kind of how i use streaming i use it as a tool like that it's a great yeah. way to you know, preview, you know, films, which I'm doing a lot more. I'm doing a lot less blind buying these yeah. days. I, I still do blind buy, but it's just significantly less than what I used to do. And so, yeah, I'll probably try and stream those two over the next few days and see. Um, but th those are two potential titles for sure. But those oh, yeah. three 4K upgrades mm -hmm. are the ones that I'm like, day one, I'm going to go just grab them. Yeah. So I'm actually holding off on the 4K upgrades. If I've already got it in the collection, then I'm not purposely buying them on 4K because um, yeah. I'm I'm still happy with the I'm still happy with the Blu-ray release because they're very well done and the fact that the artwork nothing really changes the features and all that kind of stuff. Now, my upgrading to 4K, I don't upgrade everything to 4K, not even close. Yeah, but it's like something like Blood Simple. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm like I. You got me on up. that. Like, yeah. but there's, you know, um, I don't know, maybe like Joan Crawford's, you know, Mildred Pierce. Like, mm -hmm. I love that film. I don't need to upgrade that to 4K. Right. There's one that I'll talk about today on my recommendations that I have the Blu-ray of that is upgraded to 4K. And I'm, I'm mm -hmm. like teetering on the edge of upgrading this one because it's a very visual film. And I'm like, oh, yeah. that might actually look uh, yeah. a little better with 4K. Fun on 4k so but i i don't i more times i look to not upgrade than i do yeah same here upgrade yeah yeah well since we're talking about recommendations if you'd like to go ahead and give your first recommendation yeah so th there's a there's going to be a theme through the first three films in my stack here so a little bit of a spoiler alert but i wanted to focus on the black experience um there's a really good um and i'm hoping there will be more um, but there's, there's some really good titles in our collection that focus on that, on the black experience. And, um, the first title that I've got here is from 1974. This is spine number one zero five two Claudine. Claudine. Uh, this is a runtime of 92 minutes. So it's not, not anything, um, you know, exorbitant, you know, runtime wise. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is directed by John Barry and, uh, Diane Carroll. Um, who's on the cover here, mm -hmm. um, actually got an Oscar nomination for her performance here. Um, and then this also features on the cover here, uh, Mr. James Earl Jones in an earlier, um, you know, an earlier performance. And it's, it's sorry about the glare. Uh, this is kind of a, a look at the welfare system. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, just a family trying to make it, uh, you know, 
mother, you know, with a lot of kids. And then she's, uh, you know, James Earl Jones is her kind of her love interest. And mm -hmm. um, it's got a fantastic soundtrack. Uh, it features Gladys Knight and the Pips. Um, and then it's got uh, Curtis Mayfield did the um, the score, but then it features uh, Gladys Knight and the Pips, which, you know, from this era, I mean, that that music just really hits. And it's it's just full of heart. It's got, mm -hmm. you know, really great characters. It's a, it's a very human piece. Um, and that's what I like about it is that it is very universal um in some ways but in some ways is very specific in the audience that it's um that it's speaking to and so uh this is one that i will i will come back to you know time and again and like i said this is spine number 1052 so it's one of the newer mm -hmm. uh, you know titles in the collection but um i'm not going to give a double feature recommendation on everything that i'm talking about today but in this case i can't help but recommend a title that I would love to see in the Criterion Collection, and that is Spike Lee's uh, Crooklyn, um, which I would love to see that get a 4K release via Criterion. You know, they might... Uh, yeah, maybe. One, one film I won't talk about today, but uh, Do the Right Thing, which is just a phenomenal film. I, I'd be surprised that the, we don't see a you know 4K upgrade on that yeah. one relatively soon, but um but yeah spike lee's film crooklyn would be a great double feature with this if you're yeah working. i've never seen crooklyn but i watched claudine when it got released i bought that during one of the sales really enjoyed it really good Had a lot of humor to it um, oh, yeah. family struggle um, yep. the mom just trying to get by day by day with her family yeah um, yeah i really enjoyed that story yeah it's and it, yeah, you're saying you haven't seen Crooklyn. I have not seen Crooklyn. Highest recommendation. If you liked this at all, you will mm -hmm. just eat up uh, Crooklyn. It's amazing. So there, yeah. that's my my first pick. Yeah, that's a good pick. I like that. Well, my first pick is an older film from the early 70s. And it's from 1973 from Terrence Malick. And it is Badlands. Nice. Um, Martin Sheen, Sissy Spacek, both do a very great performance. Um, what's interesting about this one, I, I love Sissy Spacek, but she is playing a young teenage girl, and Martin Sheen's character is a little bit older, which is kind of cringy a bit, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and... But what I like about it is their dynamic together. They they play well with against each other. And Sissy Spacek is just a genuine great actress. Yeah. Um, but I like I like the um the focus is mostly just on the two of them. The whole film. There's hardly ever any other true interactions other than this crime spree that they go on. Um I don't know. I don't really want to touch on too many spoilers, but a lot of things happens happens in this film, and you can. I don't know. It almost reminds me a little bit of. I can't think of the name of the movie. All of a sudden, um, it well, I'll, I'll interject here. It actually kind of reminds me of a, a film that I watched today, which is um, I, I've seen it before, but Steven Spielberg's uh, feature film debut. Mm -hmm. which was the Sugarland Express. Oh, yeah. Where the couple, uh, you know, Goldie Hawn, um, you know, they're on the run. Uh, you know, they're, they're trying to go get their son, but um, it kind of has a similar, uh, you know, loosely kind of a similar yeah, you know, similarity there. So it's the Laura Dern movie that I'm thinking of. Um, oh. What's the name of that movie? I can see the cover. Are you talking about smooth talk? Smooth talk. You oh. know um, how she is almost like a wild child because she was kept so um, set. You know, her family kept her so tightly in their grasp that when she was able to kind of get herself free from that, how she just kind of went like crazy wild, you know? And, um, you know, I, I didn't have daughters. I had sons, so I didn't really deal with a teenage daughter, but I can see where 
um, you would probably keep them on a, you know, close at home and not want them going out doing things that teenagers get into. Um, but yeah, what I liked about this also, I believe this is a dramatization of something that really happened in the 1950s. I think this was based loosely off of a true crime story. So, but yeah. I would highly recommend anybody check that out. Have you seen Badlands? Yeah, it's been, I, I, I have, I, I love Terrence Malick. Um, it's been a number of years since I've seen Badlands. So that's yeah. one I would need to catch up with again. Yeah. Um, I will say Smooth Talk is one of my all time favorite Criterion discoveries. Yeah. I love that movie. Laura Dern is absolutely adorable. Like she's yeah, so, great. so good in that movie. But yeah, one of my favorite, yeah. favorite discoveries. Even, even the mom um, that played her mom in that film. Yeah. Um, it was just great. I, I love Smooth Talk. I, I don't have that as any of my choices, but I would, that would be another great recommendation. Oh, easily, easily. Easy recommendation for sure. Okay, what, what's your next one? Okay, so continuing again with this theme of the black experience, the next one I've got here is, um, this is Cooley High. Mm. Uh, this is from 1975. So this is just a year after Claudine. So we've got a, a you know some great films coming out. Um, this is spine number 1165, a uh, runtime of 107 minutes. Um, and this is directed by Michael Schultz. Um, this is kind of a coming of age film. It, it's, it's kind of these, these guys are at the end of high school. Um, and it's kind of a look at just that time in your life, which, mm -hmm. you know, can be pretty, you know, up and down. Um, it's, it takes place in Chicago about a decade earlier. So in the, in the mid sixties, so you're, um, you know, you're at kind of the, the peak of the civil rights movement. Um, you know, they live in the, in the projects and it's just, it's really funny. It's really heartfelt. Um, one of the guys, um, this guy right here. So he, he played, um, what I actually know him from was the Michael Jackson story, like the made for TV movie. He played mm -hmm. Joe Jackson is, you know, Michael, the, you know, the Jackson's the dad. Yeah. Um, he played him in that film and, and, uh, you know, and of course he's really gruff and mean, which, you know, Joe Jackson really was in real life, but, um, they are so great in this film. These are, you know, two, you know, they're, they're best buddies. And, um, I mean, I'm even thinking of scenes. I don't want to, you know, talk about anything in depth because I want people to kind of experience this, but right. it's really funny. It's really just, you know, teenagers goofing off, being stupid, like, you know, and there's, uh, you know, girlfriends, and there's partying and there's trying to figure out what's going to happen next. And yeah, and really, out. really deep moments, really good moments, super easy recommendation. Um, the other thing this has going for it is it's got a, uh, excuse me, it's got a great Motown uh, soundtrack. Hmm really really uh just a great time so yeah i'll have to i'll have to put that on my list to check out i've been eyeballing it but i wasn't really sure i haven't really heard too many people talking about it but with your recommendation i would definitely want to check that one out well it's it's an easy recommendation again you know it, it's it, it's a different type of story but if you liked claudine mm -hmm. like i'm talking to you specifically like i would easily recommend this to you like right. no you know no issue whatsoever. Okay, so my next recommendation is another older title. And this one is from 1949. And it is The Heiress. Have you ever seen this one? Olivia de Havilland, I have not. Oh my goodness, this is an amazing film. 100% want you to check this one out. Do you still have the Criterion um, channel? I do not. You don't, okay. Uh, I was going to say, if you ever wanted to, you could always just check it out before you purchase. But this would be one that I would 100% recommend a purchase for. Um, like I said, it's from 1949. It's about um, Olivia, de, Olivia de Havilland's character. Her name's Catherine. And she comes from a very wealthy family. She is a plain Jane. Everybody likes to talk to... Everybody pretty much talks about how plain she is. But she is going to be receiving a lot of money 
as an inheritance because she comes from a wealthy family. So with that in mind, she has suitors coming to um, to parties that they have, and um, and she really wants to find love, but she wants to find genuine love, someone that loves her for herself, yep. her plainness, you know, not just for the money. And you know, when you have substantial money, which I would never know what that felt like, you um, would always have those people that you would question their motives. Yeah. Especially if you were like a plain Jane and you had these very handsome, rich um, men coming up to to date your daughter. So there's some dynamics between her and her father in the story. It's it's a melodrama. So there's a lot of that in there. But I think I think it would be a high recommendation for me if you want to check something like that out, especially if you like older films. Well, Olivia to have one, too, is. Oh, is yeah fantastic there's a um not not to get off I, I i always get off on tangents when you and i talk but um uh there's a film called the snake pit oh. uh with olivia de havilland um she has a really good performance it's kind of a it's a film about uh mental health kind of oh. when that wasn't like a super i guess normal thing normal mm -hmm. subject or there, there wasn't a lot of films that that uh, you know commented on the subject, but uh, she gives a, a really wonderful performance. So I, I've had my eye on uh, that film on the heiress. Um, yeah, you know, just because I, I think Olivia De Havilland is fantastic. Yeah, so I I'll, think you'd really enjoy it. I'll definitely seek that one out. Um, okay, what do you have next? Yeah, so number three in my uh, the Black Experience kind of trio here, triple feature. Um, this is starring Ivan Dixon and Abby Lincoln. This is nothing but a man. Mm. Um, this is fantastic. So funny that Cooley High takes place in 1964. Uh, this film was released in 1964. So again, this is the height of the civil rights movement. This is the year, like you think about it, this is the year after the uh, MLK, I have a dream speech. Um, you know, this is from, you know, kind of right in the heart of that time. Um, and this is directed by Michael Romer. Uh, and this is, I don't know if I already said this, spine number 1209. So this is uh, definitely a newer title in the collection. Um, and uh, yeah, Ivan Dixon, featured here on the cover, he plays a railroad worker. And so he's, uh, you know, not a flashy job. You know, it's um, another one of these films where he's just, he's just trying to get by. Mm -hmm. He's got a really rocky um, relationship with his father. And that really comes to the forefront of the story and him trying to make amends with, um, you know, his father and then, you know, his own kind of romantic relationships and not falling into, uh, you know, the traps of, you know, kind of the sins of his father, so to speak. It's, mm -hmm. it's really kind moving. Making a change in his own life to where he doesn't repeat yeah. the same things his father did. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's one of those. And I, I feel like a broken record sometimes, especially with these three films, but it's just, it's a very human film. It's not, flashy it doesn't use you know weird editing tricks it's not it's just very human and uh you know i absolutely love that about this film um and interestingly enough i guess malcolm malcolm x was a really big fan of this film when it uh when it was released and so uh you know there's that you know kind of nod of approval but mm. um yeah i mean it's you know, it's looking at everything kind of going on in that in that uh, era as well. You know, so you know, racism obviously is is uh, you know brought out, and that's and that's always uncomfortable. Um, but it's it's so important to these stories because it's you know, if we're not talking about what's going on and we're not learning from history, we're not yeah you know able to move forward like we should be. And I mean, there's obviously you know we're not. You know, th this isn't an issue that's just that's fixed, but it's uh, um, 
it just shines the spotlight on uh you know just a very human experience and and what this man is going through and and that's what i appreciate about it and what i appreciate about films like this is they present you know very uncomfortable ideas and subjects and you know but it, it allows us to have conversations about these things and be able to you know um yeah, I mean, just having a conversation to begin with, I think, is is important. Why these types of films are are important? Yeah, yeah that's three great three great recommendations right there. Yeah, um, like I said, I've only seen Claudine, so I definitely want to check the other two on two out. Uh, yeah, easy recommendation on these, and I think um, I think all of these actually, yeah, all of these are new 4K digital restorations. This is new restored uh, new restored 4K digital master. And uh, this is approved by the director. Um, and then you get some, uh, you know, extra features on each of these as well, obviously. But yeah, very, very high recommendation. Great. Well, mine's a little, my next one's a little bit more lighthearted compared to what I've already pulled the other two. Um, but this one, I really enjoy. I've seen it many times. Um, I grew up watching it in the 80s. It came out in 1982. It's a Sidney Pollock film, and it is Dustin Hoffman and Tootsie. Oh, yeah. So I always, always like to recommend Tootsie to anybody that's never seen it before. Um, but just a really great performance by Dustin Hoffman. Mm-hmm. He is a struggling actor, can't find work doing anything. Um, I want to say that this all takes place maybe in New York City. I can't really remember the location. I want to yeah, say yeah. New York, but it's... Um, what he ends up doing is he ends up becoming this female um, actress and um, playing a role on a soap opera. And what he's done during the, during this time is he's kind of changed the dynamic of the soap to where it's more focused on um, treating women with respect, you know, treating women as human beings, not as sex objects. Because if you think about soap operas, even back in the 70s, the 80s, it was more of a um, salacious type program to watch to see, you know, who's who's with who and, you know, mm-hmm. what's going on. But I love the way that he goes in there and as a man playing a woman, still having those opinions, um, cause he was pretty much kind of like that kind of character. And so I think he learned through that process of becoming this woman as an actor, um, that kind of changed his life. It's got a great cast. Um, it's got, it's got, what's her name? Um, Jessica Lang in the oh, role. That's and, right. and then it's got, her, um, her, her father in the film is um well well because there, there's a so it's got terry gar in it it's got charles durning as um um jessica lang's father in the film it's also got dabney coleman in it um as oh, one of, oh. as a casting as the director of the of the soap so it's got a really good cast yeah um, just really great performance i really enjoyed that one i forgot terry gar was in there as well yeah i that's another one. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I, I, uh, I definitely enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, it's got a great theme song too. Say that again. It's got a great theme song that played. Oh. Um, it brings back memories from from when I was, you know, it came out in 1982. I was, I was, early teens during that time. Yeah. And yeah. I remembered the theme song playing on the radio all the time. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's a good pick. Yeah. So what do you have up next? Okay, so next, um, I'm a huge fan of this director. This is one of his later works. Um, He's very prominent in the Criterion Collection, but Mm -hmm. I don't remember recommending this one. I I don't know. I might have recommended this before, maybe even on one of your videos. Who knows? But this is from 1990. This is from Akira Kurosawa. This is Dreams. Oh, yeah, I don't think I remember seeing that one. Uh, so this is the one that I was going to say. This has been upgraded to 4K. This is the Blu-ray copy. And I'm really tempted to 
Um, I'll probably watch my Blu-ray again and see just quality wise, or maybe look up some notes online and see if there's a big bump in quality. Mm -hmm. um, because this is just a visual feast of a film. It's so what, what year did it come out? Right? So this is 1990. So this is okay, yes, it's pretty yeah later later in his career. Yeah. Um, and this is based on actual dreams that uh, Kurosawa had, and it's kind of mixed. So I don't know how much is you know directly from his dreams and how much is from like Japanese folklore, but it's definitely a mix. Um, but it's kind of an eight part. Um, uh, it's like eight different uh, vignettes. So nice. these eight different dreams. And it's interesting because there's one sequence with Vincent Van Gogh and it is, I, I don't know what my favorite sequence would be. That's definitely up there, but Martin Scorsese actually plays Vincent Van Gogh mm. in that sequence. And it's that sequence in particular is very, very colorful. Um, you know, as you can imagine being based on the paintings of Vincent Van Gogh. Um, and so it's just this really exceptional, um, again, you know, eight parts, uh, and it's just this visual journey and, you know, it gets, it gets really, really deep into some folklore, you know, type elements. Oh, really? And, you know, being based on his dreams, there's some more, uh, I guess, dream type logic that kind of plays through um and yeah it's 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 hard to uh it's hard to summarize a film like this it's one of those where you just you have to experience it pop the disc in or go find it to stream and just yeah. watch it what yeah. language is it in um well there's uh so it's in japanese with english subtitles okay um but there's you know sequences that are definitely more um you know, less dialogue. And yeah, more, it's like, almost silent, just visual. Yeah, it's just, it's very, a very, very visual film, which is not surprising because Kurosawa is, is just, you know, an absolute master of his craft. I mean, visually his films are, you know, on another level. He's one of my favorite directors of all time, but, um, and from what I hear, there is a uh, 4K restoration out there for Seven Samurai. So, Oh, um, might be you know seeing that one coming up, and that that's an old enough transfer that they used on that Blu-ray because that Blu-ray came out so long ago. But that's probably one you know that I would I would look to upgrade to 4K. And this yeah. one, so this is um, sorry, so 1990 spine number 842, and this is a full two-hour runtime. So this isn't a short, mm. you know, like it's it's a full. So is there, is there an interesting story that kind of breaks these dreams out in these eight different dreams? Yeah, it's it kind of plays out throughout the whole film. Yeah, it's kind of, I mean they're, they're all explained. they're all very distinct. It, it's it's mm -hmm. kind of hard to explain. Um, but they're so it's all not, very, so it's not like little shorts. It's one complete film that includes all eight of these dreams. Cor correct. Okay, yeah. and, th and they're all very distinct, like visually, and so it just. You're just kind of taken on this on this okay. journey, um, yeah. So that's that's all that I'll say about it. It seems Eas interesting. Easily worth you know two hours of your life to, to watch with this, um, yeah. So I'll, I'll have to think about upgrading this because this does come from a 4K digital transfer, and and Criterion does so good at authoring their discs and you know with encoding and things like that. I'll, I'll have to. I'll have to see if this one's going to be worth upgrading, but it is certainly, you know, a very visual film. So, yeah. Well, my next recommendation is coming from 1958. It's another older film, which I really, I, I kind of lean toward the older films, with the Criterion release, because they've got so many great ones that, you know, you don't really hear about until you start researching Criterion collection titles. But it's from 1958. It's a night to remember. Yeah. Um, really great film about the Titanic. And what I really love about this one is, you know, typically when you see a movie, when, whenever I think about the Titanic, you think about the movie Titanic. And it's such a not so historic tale. It's more focused on a character or characters. Um, but this right here is almost, to me, it felt almost like a documentary the way that it was done. Um, 
but I just love being able to see a different aspect of the Titanic. It's more real to life. And you could really see how the survive. There's some survivors that kind of um, played a played a part in the making of this film. Uh-huh. And the special features on this is excellent. You get to you get to hear interviews and different things about different survivors. So, um, like I said, what I like about this is it's more real to life. If you like disaster films, this right here really goes. Um, in the disaster film kind of part to where when it starts, you know, the whole thing from start to finish, it's the day of, of what's happening on the Titanic. And it really makes you think about what a, a horrific thing that was and that people survived it and lived to tell the story. And that's where we get this from. But like I said, you know, you think about the film Titanic you know, that's more of a Hollywood type film, you know? Well, well, yeah, James Cameron, there, there's there's reasons why I love James Cameron's film. Mm-hmm. What I love about A Night to Remember is it, it is, I completely agree with you, it's a lot more grounded. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that really serves it. I mean, there, yeah, there, there's parallels that you'll see in the story between the two because, mm-hmm. you know, Cameron's film, it still has the overarching you know, right. story of the Titanic, and you can kind of find those parallels in that regard. Um, but a night to remember is a lot more grounded. Uh, and yeah, I I like both of the films for mm-hmm. kind of different reasons. Yeah. You know? Another part of that though is the fact that you have the high class um, passengers. And then you have the lower class passengers. And with this film, you can really see how they were treated differently yeah. in the survival and and even trying to get off the boat and all the things that were happening. There's things I love about Titanic. It's a great film. I love James Cameron's Titanic, but yeah. I, I love seeing this afterwards. I think it's a good, a good closer look at the historical event. I, I would highly recommend because everybody and their dog has seen Titanic. Right. I would highly recommend as you are right now watching mm-hmm. the night to remember. Yeah. 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 Great. Great pick. Okay. What you have up next. All right. So my last pick, um, this is a, you know, very much a, a, a newer film. This is from 2021 uh, from director Celine Siama, um, which I know mm-hmm. everyone thinks of a uh, portrait of a lady on fire. This is her follow-up to that film. Um, so this is spine number 1181, and this is a runtime of a whopping 73 minutes. Um, so really, you know, short runtime on this one, but um, man, does this pack a punch. Mm-hmm. And I will say it it's a very, um, it's a very quiet, very meditative type film. And so it's not, you don't have a lot of, um, uh, you know, I guess story elements in the way of conflict that's going to give you, you know, anxiety and, oh, what's going to happen next? It's it's amazing the tone that she's able to establish here. Mm-hmm. It feels like a walk through a beautiful park on a perfect afternoon. It's, it, I, I don't know, that that's kind of the, you know, the felt, the 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 feeling I had watching this film was very peaceful. It's very peaceful, quiet. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's what I loved about this. But I mean, this is, um, you know, kind of high level. This is a story of, you know, familial relationships, you know, maybe more specifically uh, mother and daughter and even grandmother to mother to daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, But it very much focuses on those, uh, those female relationships. and yeah, it's this is one that if we talk about any plot points, it is going to give a lot away. It's it's mm-hmm. so. Yeah, I think what you said about it is pretty pretty good. Um, yeah. the, the least you say about this particular film, and like you said, it's only got a seventy something minute runtime, and it's yeah. very slow paced. It's very calming. There's nothing very, you know, alarming about it or anything. A beautiful film. I, I really loved it. I need to revisit it again. Yeah, and uh, the uh, 
so it's a very painterly kind of cover here but the two little girls um uh just fantastic casting in this mm -hmm. um very well done film and and the cool thing about this too is you actually get a a bonus film here you get my life as a zucchini which mm -hmm. was oscar it's an oscar nominated um stop motion animated film and it was co-written by uh celine siama so you have that as an extra feature on here so you get two yeah, films, two films. Um, and then this is a, a 2K digital master. You get a um, you know conversation with Celine Siama, and then you get that bonus film, and then you get the essay booklet. So, uh, you know, two films during the sale. This is twenty bucks, like easily worth it. Mm -hmm. um, I would pay twenty dollars even if it didn't have the bonus movie because this is so petite. Maman is so um, good, you know, just in and of itself, but. But yeah. it's cool. It's cool that they that they included that, and I, I love just the like the art direction of this set is just really cool. Um, you know, one uh, and and this is in you know Celine Siama is French. This is in French with English subtitles. Um, and man, this is one. Uh, so I got this probably just a maybe last July. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just the last July sale. Um, but at spine number 1181, you know, it is a newer title in the collection. It just, it was just released in 2021, the, the actual film. So, um, but yeah, high, high recommendation on, uh, Petite Maman. And that is, uh, wraps up my recommendation. Yeah. And I really enjoyed that film too. It, it was amazing. Um, yeah. And I would have never really checked it out if it wouldn't have been for people making recommendations because like you said, that's a newer film. So people talking about it kind of helps get your interest peaked. Yeah. Because um, I would have never thought about, you know, picking that up. That's what I love about these recommendation um, videos is people haven't heard about all the films that we that we're aware of. And it's always good. I love getting recommendations. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm looking over here like we were talking about Smooth Talk. Mm -hmm. I never had heard of that film prior to Criterion releasing it. Right. And I have that now, you know, because of the Criterion collection, because of hearing people, you know, discuss it in the community. And yeah. so yeah, it, it, it's always, uh, um, you know, I, 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 I was almost laughing there because I, I know like John over at Platex too, he's always, mm -hmm. you know, taking notes. He's such, he's so good at taking recommendations and going out like, him and I have had good conversations. He'll message me like, "Oh, you recommended this, and I picked it up." And like, I love, I love that we all have that kind of relationship, you know? Yeah. Well, my last film um, that I want to recommend is from 2005, and it's from Noah Baumbach, and it's The Squid Ooh. and the Whale. Oh yes. Um, I, I love this one. Another great film that you really don't hear many people talk about. So good. Um, it's such a great release. This is based on Noah Baumbach's actual childhood and what he went through um, with uh, parents of divorce. Jeff and Daniels. it really goes in depth with um, the family dynamic being broken up mm -hmm. and how there's a struggle. You know, I, I'm not a child of divorce. I really don't know that experience. but to me, it felt so lifelike, you know, so realistic. Um, the, you know, teenage son, well, one's a teenager, one's a little bit younger, yep. but the the emotions that they go through and, and you know, the splitting up of the family, um, someone being, um, someone breaking up the family, you know, all that gets dealt with in this film and just a beautiful setting. Um, it's a city. They live in a city, so you kind of get that feel. But really beautiful film. Yeah. And one that you, I, just one I'd never really heard talked about until this came out on Criterion. Um, but yeah, I really love this. What did you think about this film? Oh, I, I love it. I, I'm a huge Jeff Daniels fan. Um, but yeah, I love the family dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, I love Noah Baumbach as a director. Yeah, um, and then Laura Lenny was excellent as the mom. Oh. She's a great Laura, actress. Well, Laura Linney, we were my wife and I were just watching the Truman Show last night. 
So oh, Laura yeah. Bruni is like fresh on my mind. She's so great. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Noah Baumbach, his wife is uh, Greta Gerwig. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So they have a, and he directed her in Francis Ha, which is another, you know, great recommendation. Easy, oh yeah, easy recommendation yeah. criterion. But oh man, I'm so glad you brought up Squid and the Whale. I, I love that film. So, yeah. So you know, I've been recommending films every day that during this week. I've recommended ten films. So this was, um, so I've done forty, and I'm trying not to repeat any that I've talked about in the past which is kind of getting difficult because we're doing so many of these videos, but I really wanted to bring that one out when I, you know, I was kind of going through each spine trying to, okay, which would be a great recommendation. And that's one that you just never hear about. So I just thought that would be a great one for people to check out. Very Great, great performances. Great. Um, Jesse Eisenberg. Yep. Nice son. Yep. Um, but the whole cast is great. And, it, and just, if it's very, it's not a very high energy type film. It's more, at ease yeah and i, I like that i mean it, so, it, it deals with some heavy subjects and there's some heavy kind of emotion that comes in but mm-hmm. it's but yeah I, I get what you're saying it's not too flashy yeah. right right definitely heavy subject matter yeah yeah but really really good that's a great pick well david i really appreciate you taking the time to um help me give out some more recommendations well, are you um anything coming up on your channel no so i man yeah i haven't had content up for a couple months i've been on a very much needed break so Mm -hmm. don't fret i will be back no (laughs) i no just just taking a break you know still staying connected with the community but just taking a break from creating content at the moment um nothing wrong with that you know no no definite you know it'll be you know this date when i'm coming back but just enjoying a little yeah, little, little breather, but um, enjoy life. Obviously, I'm doing this video with you. I'm still loving, you know, interacting with the community. That's mm-hmm. never going to go away. But, um, mm-hmm. anyways, yeah. So, uh, no, no new content. I guess I should say. Okay. Now, are you? Um, so, you're planning on participating in the sale? Yeah, I'll I'll at least be getting a few titles, doing those upgrades, and then okay. a couple that you mentioned, like Risky Business and uh, Pat Garrett and um, yeah, Billy the Kid. Oh, yeah, maybe maybe a couple, but yeah, it's going to be pretty tame for me. Well, good. Well, hopefully, we'll get to see some of those maybe posted on your Instagram page when you get them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, thanks again for joining us, and we will see everybody later. Thanks. So I hope you enjoyed that conversation with David and I, and maybe you got some recommendations from the titles that we talked about. I hope that you're able to pick up some more Criterion Collection titles. If you do, please leave me a comment below and let me know the titles that you picked up and also share some of your recommendations with us. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, and we'll see you next time.